the final decision on the plan for an industrial research park in Pullman and what the Port of Whitman County decided today. As well as a Pullman celebrity will be making a special appearance. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Austin Peppers. And I'm Alexander Huddleston. Welcome to Murrow News 8. We have an update on the plan for an industrial research park on the south side of Pullman. The Port of Whitman County commissioners voted 2-1 to one today to end their rezone application for the park. The board originally agreed to purchase land on Wawai Road for $3.8 million and have AgTech OS develop a biodiesel plant in the park. AgTech OS pulled out of the plan weeks ago in the face of public opposition. Commissioner Christine Meyer started the motion to end the proposal due to the local government agency having the lack of money to buy the land. Earlier today, SpaceX aimed to send the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built on a round-world trip. The rocket blasted off into the atmosphere, traveling only 24 miles before things went sideways. Multiple engines on the 33 booster Starship malfunctioned, causing the rocket to flip on its side and lose altitude. The 400-foot shelter a shuttle, excuse me, blew up due to the self-destruct system, sending falling into the gulf below. No one was hurt as there were no passengers on board the flight. The Boy Scouts of America will proceed to distribute compensation to thousands of sexual abuse victims. The organization will plan to pay upwards of $2.4 billion from a victim compensation trust that was established by the court during its bankruptcy reorganization. The BSA also plans to include improved safety measures so that traumatic incidents like this won't occur in the future. Yesterday, a man called in a bomb threat to the Marshall store in Moscow. Everyone was safe and no bomb was found. However, but both Marshalls and next-door neighbor Petco were evacuated. The phone, call came, the phone call threat came in just before noon, and Moscow police are working to backtrack where the number came from and if they can identify any suspects. Yesterday at around 3.30 p.m., someone tried to cash a forged check of $3,000 at Umpqua Bank. After speaking with police, we learned the suspect was stopped in a black Jeep Cherokee on SR-195. The driver, 35-year-old Brun Shea Miller, was driving without a license and is currently booked in Windman County Jail for forgery and fraud charges. Another man, 36-year-old David Feeder, was also arrested for felony theft and forgery. Local residents continue to appeal against the proposed rock pit on the grounds of environmental violations. Community Developer Director R.J. Lott has deemed that the rock pit would not comply with the Washington State Environmental Policy Act. The city's hearing examiner will consider appeals in the coming months. Coming up, Danny will give us a little preview of our upcoming weather, which may include some rain. And we'll tell you what to expect next on Murrow Music. Washington State University Center for Arts and Humanities has received a huge donation of more than $1.5 million from WSU alumnus David Pollard. WSU is deciding to name the center after Pollard due to the amount of opportunities the money offers students. Funding will go to things like arts, music, and humanities programming. WSU School of Music and the Palouse Choral Society are partnering for a concert in Bryan Hall tomorrow night at 7.30. Admission is $20, but free for students and kids ages 6 to 12. To buy a ticket or to learn more, visit PalouseCoralSociety.org. Washington State University's Science and Technology Center has created a viable formula for a carbon-negative, environmentally friendly concrete, seeming to be nearly as strong as regular concrete. 
This research could create new horizons for a zero-carbon built environment and could reduce the amount of wastewater that is used in the production of concrete. <laughs> While many of you viewers might be in the clouds, our reporter Aaron Monson is on the ground. Aaron, tell us what event is going on today. I'm on the corner of Grand Avenue and Stadium Way here in Pullman, Washington in the parking lot of Cush 21, a marijuana dispensary here. Now, they have partnered with the Palouse Music Community to bring you 420 Fest. Now, what's 420 Fest? It's essentially a block party in the parking lot of Cush 21. Now, there's going to be live music and catering. So, live music, some of the bands you'll hear today are half step ahead. At 4 p.m., they'll be playing live music. And at 8 p.m., you'll hear from Desolation Horse. And from 12 to 6 p.m., CTG Creations will be catering their homemade food with their family that they cook. They're going to be serving Korean corn dogs. Now, I really recommend if you guys have never had a Korean corn dog, you ha you should definitely try it. That's all I've got for you guys today at, down here at Chris 21 in Coleman. I'm Aaron Monson, Murrow, News 8. Thanks, Aaron. All right, Danny, with only two more weeks left in P-Town, what kind of weather can us seniors be expecting? Thanks for that, Alex. Well, aside from the light haze that you might see in the air today, there's going to be some serious cloud action, and that cloud action will lead to rain. And so if you are at any point tonight standing in a group, a circle with your friends for any reason outside, at least seek some overhead shelter because you're probably going to want it. So we take a look at what's going on today. It's going to be partly cloudy up until this evening. We have some rain action coming on later tonight, but that wind luckily is not too bad at only around 5 miles an hour. The sun's going to sit at 745. Moving on to tomorrow's weather, a little bit more of the same, but that rain and snow is going to pick up. And that wind is also going to pick up coming from the west at 14 to 22 miles an hour. So definitely wear a windbreaker at least and maybe even like a hoodie or something. So moving on to the state map. Um, over on the west side, nothing new here, but a whole lot of rain. High of 47 in Olympia, high of 50 in Seattle. Um, and that's what's going on over there, a whole lot of rain. Over in the central part of the state here, Tri-Cities is having a gorgeous day, 55 degrees and sunny. Yakima, unfortunately, is picking up some of that west side rain, um, but, you know, it's spring. They'll uh, come around eventually. Um, taking a look at the east side over here, though, uh, Spokane and Pullman. Um, cloudy, not too much to say about that, but like I said, in Pullman, that rain is going to pick up tonight and for the rest of the week here. Taking a step off the screen so you can see the five-day forecast, like I said, you're just going to see a whole lot of rain for the next three to four days. But luckily on Tuesday, it's going to be a gorgeous day, 59 and sunny. That's all for weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Danny. Coming up, big news from the women's golf team. And the year for Cammie Etheridge just keeps getting better. Next on Murrah News 8. WSU's golf sophomore Madden Gamble finished the 2023 Pac-12 Women's Golf Championship in a tie for third place to match WSU Hall of Famer Kim Welsh. On Wednesday, Gamble concluded the Pac-12 Women's Golf Championship at 4 under 212. She is now the first WSU women's golfer to card under par in all three rounds at a Pac-12 championship as she posted scores of 71-70-71 to finish the tournament in a tie for third. The Pac-12 prom conference has announced that WSU women's golfer Darcy Habgood has earned an all-Pac-12 honorable mention selection. This is the first all-Pac-12 honor of Habgood. Darcy has led the Cougs with a scoring average of 73.09, which is the second best season scoring average in program history. She has also collected six top 15 finishes this season. 
U.S. basketball announced that Kemi Etheridge will coach the U.S. Women's Mary Cup team. The team is set to compete at the 2023 FIBA Women's Mary Cup on July 1st through the 9th in Leon, Mexico. Etheridge has previous U.S. basketball experience both as a player and a coach. WSU basketball will be hosting Santa Clara this weekend for a non-conference series. The series will begin Friday at 3.05 p.m. Then, you baseball fans, you can see more again on Saturday at 12.05 p.m. To wrap up the series and weekend, the last game will be on Sunday at 12.05 p.m. This will be an exciting game as our furry friends will be able to join us. This Sunday is Bark in the Park at Bailey Brayton. Fans can bring their dogs and receive a WSU Cougar baseball dog toy. I sure know of someone that would enjoy this event, sending it back to the desk so you can find out more. Thank you, Danny. This weekend sounds super exciting. Yeah, Austin, but don't go anywhere. We have a special guest joining us here in the studio next on Murrah News 8. All right, guys, a very special guest. You may have seen at a football game or on social media or just around campus. It's Dash Dog and his little friend Chase and their owner, Andy Edlund. Hello. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, they're here for a super exciting weekend. Can, you know, what, are you, what are you guys excited for this weekend? Well, we always like coming over to Pullman. It's always great to get back home. Dash and I come over often, visit our friends at the Coug, go to a, go to a football game. Uh, and we've obviously got a new... A new little guy. Uh, this is his first trip to Pullman. Oh, wow. He's had a big day. He's a little tired. We're excited to have him for first Yeah, this is his first time on camera, so he's, uh, he's excited. And you guys, I'm, we talked earlier, you guys represent, you know, a great cause. And, you know, what, can you explain a little more? Sure. Uh, last week, I was introduced to a family uh, uh, in the Seattle area that runs uh, an organization called Canine Cancer Alliance. And uh, we connected because they have an event at Marymore Park on May 7th. It's a 5K fun run and walk for it's dog friendly, and it's to raise funds for the Canine Cancer Alliance. And uh, what they're doing actually is funding a clinical trial, clinical vaccine trial uh, for osteosarcoma, which is an aggressive uh, malignant bone cancer that occurs in uh, a lot of dogs. That family lost several of their goldens to that disease, so they're they wanted to do something about it. Um, and we found out that one of the track one of the vaccines is being or the, one of the trials is happening here at the Veterinary Medicine Center. So. We were able to meet with a uh, professor coordinating the, the trial. His name is uh, Dr. Sellen. We met with him today to find out more about the trial and how we can help get the word out about getting more dogs into the study and also how that therapy might help uh, dogs fight cancer. Gotcha. And so, you know, how can, um, you know, our students or people watching the show, how can viewers be, get involved? So, uh, if they want to get involved, uh, you can go to uh, caninecanceralliance.org. Uh, to, if they're in the Seattle or East Side area to participate in the race. It's not a race, it's an event, like a fun run. Um, so that's a great way. I'm sure there's also information on the website on how to donate just to the, to the, or, uh, to the, the alliance. And also if they want to, if you have a dog that has an osteosarcoma, if they want to participate in the study, they can sign up for the trial there. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, if you guys see them walking around campus, you see them at the baseball game or any, you know, even at the bar, uh, Walk up. Say hi. They're just a couple of dogs. They're awesome. Um, but, yeah, that's it from us. Make sure you follow Dash Dog on Instagram, of course, and, you know, on our YouTube or Instagram to get more news from us. Have a good night.